Okay, so we're reviewing um, the candle lab. We're gonna try to finish the how a candle works today. And I've given them a sheet. I'll put this online, but the sheet has um, about 22 vocabulary words that you have to put into a story. And that's what we're gonna try to do today. All right, what about page one? How about more danted? That's a weird word, isn't it? What's another way for saying more danted? Pickled, okay. Somebody, somebody decided that, not decided, they discovered that, wow, when you do this to the wick, uh, it'll, it won't smoke as much, will it? And it won't leave an ash. And all of a sudden, candles change. He said, wow, these are nicer candles than, than my grandfather had. You guys have some nice candles, don't you? You have a lot nicer candles than they had in the 1800s. All right, let's go on. Did we talk about... Did we talk about, in your class, did you talk about uh, whether your wick is too big or too small? Okay. Okay, let's go down to here. Did we talk about, um, um, did we get down to this paragraph here? Okay, so if you had to start your story, you might start like this. When you, uh, when you light the candle, you, the heat from the wick does what? What happens to the, the heat from the wick does what? melts the wax, doesn't it? So that means changing from a what? Be scientific for me, okay? From a solid to a liquid. And then it says, and then it says the liquid wax is pulled up the wick by capillary attraction. Did we do that yesterday? Okay. And we know that capillary attraction, uh, a common name is called what? Wicking. Even a paper towel wicks things up, doesn't it? And we know that capillary attraction has to do with two uh, fancy words. One's called adhesion and one is cohesion. Did I do the little salt thing yesterday with you guys? Did I put, did I put some food coloring on salt? Are you sure? Did I put it in a ca uh, capillary tube? Did I put it on the inside of the capillary tube? Did I put it on the outside? Did I put it on a paper towel? Did I put it on a little bit of salt? Okay. You want to see that? Okay, you want to see that? Okay. You know, a wick, it doesn't have glass tubing in it, does it? So why am I showing you a glass tubing, a capillary tube? <coughs> and, and a wick, does a wick have fibers? Hey, it does, like paper towel, right? So instead of being tubes, you can actually have it in fibers, can't you? <clears throat> but what about this? What if I don't have any tubes or any fibers? What if I just have some little grains of sand or grains of salt? In this case, these are grains of salt. Can we get uh, capillary? Uh-oh. There it is. <clears throat> Do you think it'll happen here? Well, you did get it out, okay. What do you think? Let's see, let's see it works. Is it spreading out? Okay, let me do another one over here. Oh, oh that's not spreading. Watch it, it's gonna spread in a minute, maybe. <laughs> I had to have enough, I had to have the pile thick enough. <coughs> and I, this happens at the beach too, doesn't it? Can't water kind of wick its way through the sand grains like that? And so um, this capillary attraction, say, what does that have to do with the candle? You say, well, it says that the liquid wax is drawn up the wick by capillary attraction. But why? Why is that important? What, what are you going to do with that liquid wax? Sean, you know, but don't you? You're looking. I think you're, what do you think? Why do we need the liquid wax to go up the wick? So it was a solid, turned into a liquid. The liquid gets drawn up the wick, and now what? Say it again. Does it stay as a liquid? How about that? I'll give you a clue. It's actually getting hotter and hotter. As it goes up the wick, it gets hotter and hotter. And what does it do? Okay, so um, the, wick, the wax change to a liquid, it's drawn up the thing, and then it's gonna change from a liquid to a what? Gas. Gas, right? It's gonna vaporize the candle, isn't it? 
So it's amazing. Light. And that is the fuel. That actually is the fuel for the candle. The flame never does touch the solid candle, does it? It never touches the liquid. It touches what? It's the vapor. Now, does anybody know what happens to um, uh, a gas? When a gas is heated, and that's what liquid gas, liquid uh, candle, is it more dense or less dense? If I take some air and heat it, if I had a hot air balloon here and cold air here, what happens to a hot air balloon? Doesn't it go like this? And why is that? Because the, 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 the heat air, it ex expands and spreads out, doesn't it? It becomes less dense. And what does less dense things do in, a, in a, all this other air that's more dense? It goes up, doesn't it? What does a piece of uh, cork do if you put it under water and you let go of it? Why? It goes up, doesn't it? Because it's less dense. Everything around it is more dense. When people say heat rises, that's not really true. But I will tell you that hot air does rise. So have you ever painted a room at all? Have you ever done any painting? Anybody done it? Okay, so what happens when you're painting the top of a room versus you're down on the floor? Well, you get on the ladder and you paint the top of the room. Do you ever notice anything happening up there? What do you think about temperature? It's hotter, isn't it? It's hotter near the top of the ceiling, isn't it? And you come on down a ladder, you think it's kind of cool. And so <clears throat> why does the flame always go up? What is it? Yeah. Right, hot air rises, right? Which has heat in it. We always say heat rises. What we really mean is hot air rises. Isn't that right? Now I want to show you something. Um, I. Remember the handout sheet I gave you on Michael Faraday? Does anybody happen to have that? I have one in my folder, but I didn't. Uh, yeah, can I borrow that right there? Thank you for being organized like that. <coughs> now, did you know on the last page of this handout sheet that I gave you, I talked about American, we wrote this, and Michael Faraday, look on the last page, and there's a picture there. This is a regular uh, candle lit, but what is this a picture of? What is that? Luke, what is that? Now, you may not have heard that. Have you ever used that term before, microgravity? Microgravity means you're in orbit. If you're in orbit around the Earth, what's some other words they use when you see astronauts floating? What do they use? What kind of words? It's called microgravity, environment. What else? Have you ever heard of zero G in quotes, right? Have you ever heard of quote, weightlessness. The reason they have to put quotes around it because they're not really weightless, but it looks as if they're weightless, right? And I'm, I don't want to be your physics teacher, but if you were in a, an elevator on the 100th floor and all of a sudden all the cables broke and you started going like this. Now, you know you're going to die pretty soon, but before you die, you could actually learn a little physics lesson before you die. So here's this elevator going down like this, right? And all of a sudden, you're going to feel like you're going to start floating. As a matter of fact, if you take something out of your pocket and, let, and go like this, it'll sit right there like it's floating. But what's actually happening is you and the elevator and the coin, you're all falling at the same rate. So it appears as if you have no weight. If you had been staying on a bathroom scale and the cables broke, all of a sudden the scale would read and you would be what? quote, weightless. You're not really weightless. You know why? Because your weight is why you're going to you're gonna die. Because the earth's pulling you in. The earth's pulling you down. So the astronauts are actually, I'm not going to get too much into physics. The astronauts are falling. But they're moving this way very fast at the same time. So they move this way really fast and they're falling toward the earth. Now, believe it or not, they don't get any closer. They fall, if, if they weren't falling, they'd be over here. But they actually find them here. So they fell as they went around the earth. They're falling around the earth. And that's what they feel like. They feel like an amusement ride where, have you ever been in a free fall ride? When all of a sudden you're falling? That's what they feel like all the time. Okay, so look at this right here. See, when we're in a free fall like that, or in an orbit, there is no up or down. 
You, you, don't, you don't let go of a coin. It, fall, it doesn't fall to the bottom, does it? And because there's no, it looks like there's no gravity, then candles don't go up because they can't, they can't go up in the air. They have to go in every direction. And that's why a candle on the, the, if they put a candle in the space shuttle or something like that, it would look like a rounded. It'd be like a round flame. And as a matter of fact, it's also uh, blue. Thank you very much. That's my new phone. Does everybody see how to use the word density now? Um, here's, I didn't tell the other class this. I'll tell you guys. How about that? Um, do you know what would happen if, uh, do you guys know what a turntable is? You play records on them? Yeah. You ever heard of a turntable? Okay, so did you know if you were to build a turntable and you would have put a jar here and a jar here and you put your, uh, this piece of wood on a turntable and you spin it like this? If you had a candle right here and a candle right here, both of the flames would go like this, straight up. But when you start spinning it, you know what would happen? If you start spinning that piece of wood, you know what would happen to the candle flames? What do you think? You think they still be straight up again? What do you think? Any ideas? They'd go like this. And the flames would go like that. Any ideas about why that happened? This is kind of, we can have fun if you want. I'd like to have fun with this. Do you know why this happens? Okay, because when, when you make that thing go around, a lot of the air in that jar gets pushed to the outside of the jar, doesn't it? And that makes it really dense. And so the flame has to go where it's not so dense, and it goes that way. Uh, have you ever seen a helium balloon in a car? Let's say you have a big car. You put a helium balloon there, and you attach it on the bottom with a weight, and then you, you, um, you take off. What happens to the helium balloon? Anybody know? Here's a helium balloon sitting in your car like this. It's inside your car, and all of a sudden you accelerate. Does anybody know what the helium balloon's gonna do? Which way, forward or backwards? What do you think? Okay, so when you take off, a lot of the air in your car is gonna be pushed to the back. That means it's gonna be very dense, isn't it? So where's the, what's the balloon gonna do? It's gonna go forward. You gotta try that. If you, if you wanna try that, you should try that. Okay, so let's go on. Um, had we mentioned, um, had we mentioned, did we talk about wicks being too big, too small? Did we do that? Look at me, everybody look at me. Did we talk about this? Okay, so I'm, I'm going on then. Did we talk about this one where it said Faraday? Did we talk, go down here where it said starting? Okay. So if you're going to get ready to write your story, it said the heat from, um, I already did this, didn't I? Yeah, I did that. The heat from the wick, wick melts the wax and by capillary action goes up. And now we're going to go some new stuff. Let's go uh, some new stuff now. It says here, uh, Somebody were to read right here. I need somebody to start reading right here. The flame has, yeah, let's do that. Who would like to read today? Yeah, I'll read. Who wants to read today? Read. Do I read? Read. All right, I'll read. I'll read. The flame ha has the interesting features that I noticed as a child. Just above the wick, you'll see a dark cone that is topped by a yellow region responsible for most of the light. On the sides of the flame um, and near the wick are these blue regions. Depending on the diameter of the wick and the height of the flame, the blue regions may only be a fraction of the height of the flame or may, re may reach nearly to the top of the yellow region. It's surprising that vaporized fuel molecules give rise to these three distinct regions instead of one. Why don't you just get one kind of flame? Why do you get yellow and blue and a dark zone. What do you think? Let me get a little candle out here and take a look at it. We haven't seen a candle for a little while. <coughs> and by the way, before you leave, please don't tell me that it's the wick that provides all that light and heat. It does not. Many of you 
asked me to cut out a piece of wick for you. And I gave you a piece of wick with, with no wax around it. Get that? How long does a piece of wick burn? Like seconds? Less than five seconds. Is that right? There's no way that the wick is what's burning. You could get a, a two hours. I could, that thing could burn for two hours. There's no way it's the wick that's burning. So what's burning? Taylor, what do you think? What? The what? The wax. Yes. The wax is the fuel. I only need the wick to help bring the liquid wax up and so it'll vaporize and we burn the vaporized candle. A lot of people think, well, it's really the wick burning and the, and the wax slows it down, right? Do you know how much that wick weighs? Like nothing. And, and, and then how many of you weighed the candle over time? I knew you guys did. You did, Thomas, you did, and Gabe, you did, right? Uh, what happened to the weight? What happened to the, the mass of this candle? It did, down and down and down. The total, you lost way more weight than the total mass of that wick. So why are you losing weight? What are you losing? Does anybody know? What are you losing when it loses weight? Wax. The wax must be changed into something else, doesn't it? The wax is changed into something else. Okay, so um, now they said, he said, that right above the wick is a dark zone, right? And what's in the dark zone? Let's try it. Let's take some out of there and push it back in the flame. But whatever it is, it catches fire, doesn't it? Does anybody know what's in the dark zone? What do you think? Vaporized wax. You are exactly right. Did I get that? There's vaporized wax there. But now, let's read some more here. It says here, uh, I'm going to skip this paragraph. Let's go down to this one right here. The relatively cool region just above the wick is called the dark cone. The dark zone. Dark zone. There, the released molecules of fuel are insufficiently heated and have so little oxygen that little or no light is emitted. There's fuel there, but what's not there? What's not there for burning to take place? I need help here, okay? You guys are just kind of sitting, you're just sitting here, not helping. What's not in the dark zone? There's a lot of fuel, it's ready, but it's not burning. Why not? Well, Lonnie, what do you think? Why, why is all this fuel is right above that wick and it's not burning? That's why it's dark there. What's missing? Yes. There's almost no oxygen there. <clears throat> now, did I read, uh, did we read the talk? Did we read this paragraph yesterday? Okay, I'm sorry. I skipped it. I shouldn't have done that. In the modern classification of flames, the type of flame produced by a candle is called a diffusion flame. Notice I put two stars there. Another familiar type is called a pre-mixed flame. Its commonest example are seen in the Bunsen burner and the gas stove. In the diffusion flame, the rate of combustion is determined by the rate at which gases diffuse through each other. Whereas a pre-mixed flame, the gases are mixed prior to burning and the rate of combustion depends on the flow rate. That was kind of fancy, wasn't it? Can I explain that to you in English? How many of you have seen, you either have a gas stove, you've seen a gas stove, you turned on a gas stove, raise your hand if you've done, you know what a gas stove does. Do you know what a gas stove does? Have you ever seen a gas stove? Have you ever used one? So your house doesn't have a gas stove, right? When, you, when, you're, when your parents cook something, when they turn on the, the, the burners, do you see a flame? What? Do you ever go in the kitchen? Yeah, I do. Okay. Do you ever see a flame? If you don't see a flame, then you probably have an electric uh, um, stove. But how many of you have a gas stove right now? Okay, what color is the flame? McKinney? What is it? Oh, uh, normally they're not orange. If it is, there's something wrong with your stove. Yes, it's blue, aren't they? It's almost all blue, isn't it? What about my candle? Is it blue? A little bit, a little bit. So here's the difference. <clears throat> the gas stove, the fuel comes in, and before you burn it, 
the company makes it so it mixes with air. It pre-mixes the fuel. It says, hey, you know what? I'm gonna put a lot of air around every bit of your fuel so you won't have to worry about oxygen. There's gonna be plenty of oxygen for every one of those fuel molecules to burn. And if there's plenty of oxygen to burn, then you get what they call complete combustion. Okay, look right here. This is new for you. This is new. Complete combustion. That means there's plenty, plenty of oxygen. So let's, let's write this out. Now, I don't know what, car, uh, what fuel you have in your house. You might have propane. Uh, my bar barbecue grill has propane. Uh, you might use some other kind of fuel, but um, whether it's candle, paraffin, or whatever, a carbohydrate, I'm sorry, a hydrocarbon, when you burn it, what does it mean in chemistry to burn? Remember that? Combine well, chemically with oxygen, right? So when you burn fuel in a gas stove, all right, it turns into what? Now, this is neat. The carbon combines with oxygen and makes what? Carbon dioxide. And the hydrogen in the hydrocarbon combines with oxygen and makes what? Water. Those are the two main ingredients. Those are the two products that are done when you have complete combustion. Uh, my furnace at home is a gas furnace. How many of you think you have a, anybody know if you have a gas stove uh, furnace? Okay. Um, that thing is set so well that it mixes the air with the gas so well that when it burns, it's almost all of it, 99%, 99.9% complete combustion. That's good. But is this a pre-mixed flame? No. How does it get its oxygen? How does every one of those fuel molecules get enough oxygen? They don't. They don't. The ones that are on the edge here, where the air is coming in, they get a lot of oxygen. But once they gobble up the oxygen, we have to wait until more oxygen diffuses in, don't we? We have to wait until they bounce in. And so the rate at which I can burn depends on the rate at which they'll diffuse. I can't make it go any faster, you get it? So what we have here is incomplete combustion. Now look at this. For incomplete combustion, you take your, carb uh, your hydrocarbon and combine it with oxygen, you burn it, and you, you do get CO2, you do get H2O, but then you get some other things. Some things are just plain old C. What do you think C is? Carbon. And sometimes you get diatomic carbon, two atoms of carbon together. They discovered that. And then you get some nasty stuff. There's a nasty thing. When you don't have enough oxygen, you get this stuff here. Now that's not capital C little O. That'd be cobalt. What's capital C big O? Carbon monoxide. When you have incomplete combustion, one of the products is carbon monoxide. Now the good news, we could burn candles in here because we have enough airflow, and so you weren't going to get sick from carbon monoxide. But don't ever, don't ever operate your car in a garage with all the doors closed. Don't ever do that. It is, they, it's, it's incomplete combustion. And a lot of carbon monoxide is formed by a car. And if you're in a garage like that, you're sitting in the car and you think, I'm having a good old time in here. You'll get a little tired and, oh, I'm so tired. And then you'll go to sleep and you'll never wake up. You'll be dead. Get that? Don't do that. I've, uh, I've seen people that had charcoal grills and they had these briquettes, you know, little charcoal briquettes. And they want, oh, I got this piece of steak. I really want to cook that thing. And it starts raining. And I've heard of people bringing their barbecue grill indoors. I've got to cook that steak. Wow, what a mistake. Mistake, yeah. What's a mistake? Charcoal briquettes, that's incomplete combustion. They give off a huge amount of carbon monoxide. All right, everybody okay on that? So now we see that if you had plenty of oxygen for that fuel, that flame would be blue, wouldn't it? And it's not. It must be what kind of flame? Is it a pre-mixed flame or diffusion flame? Diffusion. What about a campfire? 
Which one? Really? You think you pre-mix the fuel on a campfire? No, it's diffusion. What about fire in a fireplace? Diffusion. And what do they all look like? Don't they all look yellow? Okay, so let's talk about that. We know that there's a lot of fuel in here, and it says down here, let's go down here. The relatively cool region above the wick is the dark zone. There, it said it's got lots, lots of fuel, but what does it not have much of? It doesn't have any oxygen in there. And so it can't burn, and it can't give off light. And it can't give off light, right? And then it says here, um, what happens as it keeps getting hotter and hotter, these fuel molecules break up. They break up into pieces. And I'll show you one of the pieces right here. The yellow part of the flame, the yellow part of the flame is called the luminous zone. And the question is, why is it so bright yellow? Uh, gas stove, you don't see any bright yellow in a gas stove unless there's something wrong with your stove. But I'm not, I'm gonna interrupt. I'm gonna take this glass and put it right in that yellow zone and let's see if there's anything happening. What happens here? Soot. You see that black soot, which is, what's soot made out of? It's on the periodic table. What's soot made out of? It's black. Uh, it will write on paper. So it's one of the elements in the, on the periodic table. It's in the first 20. It's in the first 10. Carbon. Carbon. That is carbon. And so my hydrocarbon has been breaking down, breaking down, and some of these pieces are just plain old soot. Now the good news, those black pieces of carbon, those black pieces of carbon, I don't see them now, do you see them? They're in there. They get hotter and hotter and hotter, and they do this thing called, where's that word? Uh-oh, where is it? All right, I'll find it. They incandesce. Now, has anybody ever used that word before in your life, incandesce? Did you know that your generation will be one of the first generations that won't know what an incandescent light bulb is? For 150 years, people used a light bulb that had a little wire in it, a little filament. You, you turn it in, you let the electricity run through the little wire, the wire gets so hot, it would start to glow. And that's called incandesce. When you, when you use a toaster, you ever look inside the toaster and you pull it down? Don't those little wires get orange? They're incandescing. They're, they're glowing, aren't they? They're so hot that they're glowing. And so what are these little carbon particles doing? They're glowing. And that's the only reason why you see a yellow flame, carbon. Now the good news, the carbon gets hotter and hotter and hotter. And by the time it gets to the top, it combines with carbon dioxide. I mean, oxygen and makes carbon dioxide. Now we don't see it. But don't forget, there was something else formed. I'll do that right there. I saw many of you do this. Many of you did this experiment without me telling you. And you saw this and you watched it and something happened to the beaker. What's happening to the beaker right now? And everybody said fog or they said condensation, but what's that made out of? What's fog made out of? What's condensation made of? Water. Where'd the water come from? Remember this? And so, look, I can even, I can even show you. It, it's wet in there. And you don't like saying that. You don't believe that a candle is giving off water because you don't see it. You're giving off water. You're giving off water. No, I'm not. Why? Because I don't see it. It's in the form of a gas, isn't it? But every winter, you do see it. Every winter, you do see the water you give off, don't you? You're giving off water right now. You are undergoing combustion. You, you are making carbon dioxide and water, aren't you? Okay, so anyway, it's kind of neat how you're kind of like that. Now let's go on a little bit, and um, let's go down to, uh, let's go down, let's, let's skip there. Let's go down to... Next, next, let's go here. next page. Okay, I put a star on this paragraph here. The most interesting portion of the candle flame is the, there it is, is the yellow region, which is called the 
carbon zone or the luminous zone. I usually call it the luminous zone. There, solid carbon particles are heated to what? What's that word? Incandescence. By, uh, okay, uh, by the hot gases and the heat radiated from the reaction zone. In this incandescence that produces, it's, that's what produces the more intense uh, light in which it looks all yellow. It's actually lots of colors of light are given off, but the yellow is so predominant, you don't see the other colors. Uh, I want to show you one more, um, oh, one more demonstration here with this. I want to show you that um, there actually is something in that yellow zone. And so what I'm going to do is take the candle and let me get a white background here. I'm going to use that light. That's not a bright, bright light, but it's bright enough to show if something gave off light, you shouldn't be able to cast a shadow with this, should you? Will a flame cast a shadow or not? It gives off light. Why would it make a shadow? But watch. Everybody see that? I have to get it right at the right focus point. Can you see right here? See that little black part? Why would a flame make a shadow? So the light's trying to go through the flame, isn't it? But what's stopping it? <coughs> Carbon. And that's also what's glowing, isn't it? That's why you see a flame. All right, and then, um, so that was kind of interesting. And the last thing I want to show you, uh, let's see. Oh, here's one. The next page. Um, let's explain this. Why is it if you had too small a wick that it would be a weak flame? Any ideas now? If the wick is too small, what happens? Yes. And there's not enough fuel either. There's, not, there's almost no fuel to produce a lot of heat. And so a lot of times the flame will go out. What about, uh, what's wrong with too big of a wick? What's wrong with that? It takes too long to relax. Uh, not necessarily too long. Actually, it'd be faster. If I had a real thick wick, uh, why would that be a bad candle too, though? Why do you get a lot of smoking? What do you think? If I have a real fat wick, do I get a little bit of fuel or a lot of fuel? A lot of fuel. And a lot of fuel, you can only burn so much. And what about the fuel that breaks down into carbon and it doesn't get burned? Then you get a lot of soot. And that's why you get a, a smoky flame there. And I'm gonna show you the last thing we're gonna do today. A little demonstration. Um, did, I thought, uh, Charlotte, did you do this one? Yeah, you did this one. You did, didn't you? Anybody else do this one? Let me else do that one. Okay, now, the author, I like how the author talked about this demonstration because when I first uh, saw this long, long ago, uh, I, it was explained to me, I thought it was a perfect explanation. I did not know that it was wrong. I did not know. As a matter of fact, I remember uh, a teacher about 20 years ago, maybe more than that, he actually did this lab in his class, and he said, watch. And he said he did this, and um, uh, I wasn't really that much into chemistry, uh, maybe, maybe it was 30 years ago. <clears throat> but he said, our kids carefully measure the volume here. And then when I put it in here, the water comes in here, and we measure how much of that volume was taken up by the water. And he said, you know what it comes out to be? 20%. And you know what percent of the air is, is oxygen? 20%. And so the wrong explanation, even though he thought it was correct, <clears throat> the wrong explanation is the flame uses up the oxygen, creates a vacuum, and sucks the water up. If that were the case, then as soon as they put it on here, the water would start coming up, wouldn't it? But that's not what happens. Charlotte, what happens first? You did this. Okay, watch the bottom. Watch the bottom of the flask, watch. You see the bubbles? So the heat, the heat from the flame heats the air and the air wants to expand, right? And air comes out of the flask at the bottom. That's why you see bubbles coming out. 
a lot of the air in the flask leaves. Then the air cools off and, and contracts. And that does leave a partial vacuum. But nothing in science sucks, nothing. A straw doesn't suck, a vacuum cleaner doesn't suck, and this doesn't either. But I will tell you that this air here, high pressure air, when there's a, a vacuum here, high pressure air tries to fill it in. Can't get in, can't get in. Oh yeah? It pushes on that water, so I'm shoving water into that empty space. It pushes the water up there. If you ever, uh, I, I don't believe me when I say nothing sucks, but uh, it's true. A straw, you, you, you do not suck things in a straw. I will tell you that you take the air out of the straw and you put it over here in the back of your throat, and now there's no almost no air in it. What does this air right here do? I gotta get in there. I gotta get in. I got. What's it do? It pushes that liquid up the straw. I know you don't believe me. I'll sh I'll, can I give you one demonstration? I'll leave. I'll let you go early. Ready? Take tonight. Get two straws. Get two straws. Put one of them in your drink. Put both of them in your mouth. One in the drink. Not one. Not in the drink. And then try to drink. If you if you're sucking that water that uh, drink in there, you should be able to get a drink, shouldn't you? You won't be able to. Because when you try to, and you try to take air of that straw to make a vacuum, more air is gonna come in. You'll never get a drink. So nothing sucks. Okay, thank you very much. Take that sheet home and tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll kind of review a little bit and uh, we'll see how well you do.